What's up, everyone? Hope you've all been safe. Uh, I just came back from Lake George this weekend, and I got some water skiing in, so in a bit, I'm going to show you that and how I did it, give you some tips and what the physics of it is. Hope you enjoy. All right, so I'm about to explain what I'm actually doing when I'm water skiing. Uh, the most important part is getting up from the water, um, so pay attention. That kind of happens quickly. I couldn't really slow down giving my demo for obvious reasons uh, because I was on a boat. But uh, so basically what happens is you start in the water and your skis are up just enough, um, not too much. You're kind of in a sitting position and the boat pulls you at the right speed, which is important. And you have to resist uh, the right amount. So if you pull too hard, you fall back. If you don't pull enough, the boat will pull you and your face plant into the water. Um, so basically, you stay in that sitting position for a little bit, and once you're up high enough, like kind of out of the water, it'll naturally happen. You could stand up, and once you're up, you just sort of stay balanced, stay standing up, don't bend your knees too much. And uh, in order to move around like you just saw me doing, you shift your weight from uh, one knee to the other by bending your knees. Um, and the other thing you could do in water skiing is jumping the weight, like you just saw right there. Uh, basically, the wake acts as a ramp. Some boats are better for this, but what you can do is you kind of shift all your weight to the one side, go far out the wake, and then you shift the other way, heading back in towards the wake, and then you kind of just let your skis fly over the wake, and bam. Uh, you know, it's easier said than done, but water skiing is sort of like riding a bicycle, so once you get the hang of it, you know how to do it, and you're good. Um, so yeah, let's get into the physics of it. All right, so let's start out with the force of water, which we didn't really talk about in class. Basically, water can be seen in two ways. Either it's turbulent or laminar. If the water is turbulent, um, which some of you might be familiar with the term, it's basically more resistant, it's rougher. And if it's laminar, the water is less resistant and smoother. That's why when you water ski, you wanna go when there's nice weather and the lake is nice and calm. If not, you meet a lot more resistance and you're in for a bumpy ride. Trust me, water skiing in a storm is not fun. Uh, but basically the formula, which you could see here, uh, to determine if the water is turbulent or laminar is called Reynolds number. Um, and it's a bit more complicated than this. Uh, this is simplified if you wanna watch another video on that. Um, there are some videos that go into great length on that, but basically, uh, looking here, you can see it's the density of the water multiplied by the length of the water times the flow speed of the water. And this is all over viscosity or internal friction of the water. So if you look at this logically, if the water has a higher density length or flow speed, it would be more turbulent. Thus, the higher number the number is, uh, Reynolds number is, the more turbulent the water is. So basically, that's what you have when you look at Reynolds number. Okay, so now that we understand that, let's look into the forces of when you're actually attempting to get up. When you're in the water, you wanna sit at ultimately, or around a 45 degree angle to the water um, with your skis out a little bit. This is because when the boat starts moving, the downward force of the water will push the bottom of the ski and ultimately like kind of lift you out, if that makes sense. While this is happening, you wanna provide a counter force to the boat by leaning back and pulling uh, against the force. So um, here you could look and you could see the free body diagram um, and you'll see that the boat accelerates forward, right? So we got that and it usually goes from around zero to 25 miles per hour in less than a second. Um, so you can imagine you gotta apply pretty strong force to uh, counter force to get up. And the arrow backwards, that's the counter force, which is an example of Newton's third law because as the boat pulls you one way, you pull the boat with an equal and opposite reaction. However, it is important to remember that this isn't a perfect 90 degrees that um, the boat's pulling you at because you're kind of down a little bit um, from the rope, so it's at an angle, and the boat pulls you at the angle, which means the water is also at an angle, um, so it hits the surface of your skis and kind of curves down off of them and like under, think about it like that, and ultimately all these forces cause you to stand up. So when you're standing up and you decide to move, you're moving 
perpendicular to the boat. And this is where centripetal force comes into play. The rope keeps you in line with the boat, and as long as there's a constant tension, when you decide to move, it pulls you inward, acting as that centripetal force. Anytime you shift from side to side while water skiing, you're accelerating. Um, now, when I water ski, we can't go straight forever. So the boat eventually has to loop around in the circle. And at this moment is when the water skier experiences the most amount of centripetal force. Personally, at that moment, I can feel myself accelerating uh, the most and moving the fastest as the momentum from the boat turning drags me out while I skid across the water. And uh, I'm feeling that centripetal force. It's pulling me inward towards the boat. Uh, but yeah, that's how centripetal force ties in with water skiing. So once you stand up, um, this is the only other thing I want to talk about. It's important not to pull hard anymore because if you do, you'll fall straight back. And here's that being demonstrated by my friend Josh.